Joining us now to talk more about the Commerce Secretary's goals uh, when she uh, heads to China, Wendy Cutler. She served as acting uh, deputy trade uh, representative under President Obama. She's now vice president of the Asia Society. Uh, do you envy um, the Commerce Secretary? Do you envy any of us uh, in the United States in trying to thread this needle at this point, uh, Wendy? Yeah, and Secretary Raimondo is going to have um, a challenge in threading this needle because on one hand, she's responsible for trade promotion, improving commercial relations, and trying to get China to address business concerns. But on the other hand, she's responsible for export controls, and we all know that these controls continue to be rolled out. So she will have a balancing act to perform in Beijing, um, she's skillful. I think she, if anyone could pull it off, she can, but I don't envy her. I would think maybe China would be more conciliatory, given some of the news that's, that's come out recently, it, with the sort of the domestic issues. I'm starting to think they might really need us or not, might need the West. Exactly. The Chinese economy is being hit by all sides. They need investment now to help improve the economic situation. And frankly, U.S. companies are leaving China. And one of the reasons they're leaving is because of the uncertain um, business environment and the tough business environment. And so if Secretary Raimondo uh, can succeed in addressing some business complaints, maybe it'd be in Beijing's interest to, to do so and therefore attract and keep, retain some of these investments that seem to be leaving. Wendy, do you, <clears throat> do you think that the, the domestic problems with, with China make them more aggressive on, on the world stage in, in non-economic matters or, or less aggressive? Should we be more concerned now with, with what President Xi uh, has to do, for, for example, with Taiwan or, or the South China Sea or, or, or whatever, balloons? On balance, my view is that um, Xi Jinping is going to be focused on domestic concerns now and finding ways to turn around the economy. Um, with respect to Taiwan, I think with the Taiwan election coming in January, um, he will um, you know, not be aggressive on that front. And remember, he's planning a trip to the United States in November. So be over between now and November, I suspect we may see um, I don't want to say a thaw in the relations, but at least stabilization in the relationship and a desire by both presidents to announce some kind of tangible outcomes. Is the boom, the, the, since, I mean, I don't know what you dated back to Deng Xiaoping, whatever, 25 time increase in, in uh, per capita GDP, I mean, an economic miracle, 800 million people brought out of poverty. Is that over? And, and what would that mean if, if, that boom suddenly is not six or seven percent, but if it's uh, GDP growth at two or three percent from a low base, only 12,000 or 13,000 is the average GDP now. So they're not a high income country yet, Wendy. Well, exactly. And, you know, typically when countries economically start to slow down, they're higher up on the per capita income um, um, sur uh, index. Um, but what I think will happen is um, that this is going to have an enormous impact on the global economy. Because remember, China has been an important driver of economic activity globally and has helped to lift the, the world out of some of the economic um, downturns. Um, and this, you know, will China be able to do that anymore? Less and less. Just, I, I'm just, I, I would like to look at things as, as half full because we have for years hoped that uh, engagement with China would eventually cause uh, the, the CCP uh, to become, I don't know, kinder and gentler and not, not you know, that we wouldn't point fingers at, at what's happening there in, in terms of human rights and personal freedom and everything else. It, are we missing the, that, that, that that could be the eventual outcome from this? Or am I being naive again, that they're just, you know, it, the birds got to fly, fish got to swim, and you can't change the CCP? Well, I don't see in the immediate term um, that happening. But that said, Chinese typically are pragmatic, 
and particularly now with the economy being being experiencing difficulties ranging from the property sector to youth unemployment to low consumer demand, they have a real interest in working with the United States um, on on the economic front. And that's what the Raimondo visit yeah. will, will be a test to see how serious the Chinese are on that front. Because, you know, kumbaya, we, we could go forward together in, into the future. And, and but you look at what we're saying, you look at the political discourse now on how we're viewing China, and it's probably worse now among certain factions in, in this country than it's than it's been in, in the past 20 years or 30 years, ever since Nixon almost. We're, we're, not headed, we're, we're not headed for any kumbaya moment. I think what we oh, may be headed for okay. are just some kind of practical outcomes that can stabilize the relationship yeah. um, and lead. Well, we could you both know, maybe, benefit. A billion and a half yeah. Chinese people are two, but whatever. They, they could benefit. We could benefit. We could all skip yeah. into the future, but it's not going to happen. That makes me sad, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, 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 you're pragmatic, too. Just like, exactly. uh, like the Chinese. All right. We need to be realistic here. All and, right. You know, All right. Yeah. Eye in the sky. Oh, I know.